Hi there, Steve Stein here again. I am going to be teaching you a song from KISS off of KISS Alive 2 called I Want You. Uh, this was a request I had, and please make sure if you have any requests that you click on the link, and I would be more than happy to teach you the songs that you're interested in learning. Now, this song generally, as most KISS stuff, is tuned down a half step. I'm not tuning down a half step. I'm just using my standard guitar for this, okay? So if you want to play along with the CD or the MP3 or whatever, make sure that you, um, you tune down your guitar a half step for that. Okay, so needless to say, to do this song, you have to be um, sort of equipped with, you know, knowledge of power chords and hammer-ons and pull-offs and, you know, things like that. I'll try and show you some of the, um, the solo as well. Now, I've got some notes that I'm going to have to refer to every once in a while over here. But So anyway, let's take a look at the beginning of this. So the beginning of the song starts with G, D, E minor, and C, D, E minor. And in this part, Paul is simply picking through the chord, and then he's singing. So it's kind of clean, and right now my... I'm running this through my computer, so I'll turn down a little bit, and that's about as clean as I'm going to get. Now, the goal with this is, is to be honest with you, every time he plays this, um, whether it's a live two or not, the picking is always different. So what I'm going to suggest to you for the intro of this song is that you simply pick whatever's comfortable. So I'm going to show you a little bit here. So if I went... And that's basically what you'd be doing, is you would just be picking uh, a static group of eighth notes across this thing, and it doesn't really matter what you're picking. Okay, if, if it's more comfortable for you as a player to make like a pattern that's consistent every time, where you're playing certain strings or a certain movement of your, of your pick, so be it. Um, if you'd rather just randomly pick through the chords like I did, you could do that too. Uh, the one thing I try and teach with a lot of my students is to understand that there's a time and a place to learn something absolute, which this song will have. Um, and then there's a time and a place to just play whatever's comfortable for you, uh, because the truth is the players that you're listening to don't always play them verbatim the same way. So you're wasting your time by trying to play something exactly the same. I shouldn't say you're wasting your time, but you certainly could be when you could just be kind of enjoying playing the song. So I'm going G, D, E minor, C, D, E minor. So it sounds like this. Then C, D, and then it starts all over. Something like that. And then we get into our concrete part of the song, which is the... Okay? And what we're doing there is we're making a fifth string power chord on the third fret and moving to the fifth fret. Now, if you'd rather strum these alternate picking or down, whatever's comfortable, you're going to go... Or you're going to go... Okay? And then it goes into... And that's the lick for the chorus. So what we're doing here is we're coming off that three to five, to the five, and then you're going to go into this, sorry. So you're going to palm mute the sixth string, you're going to hit it twice. And right there you're going to the seventh fret of the fifth string and you're not going to palm mute that. Okay, then you're going to play five, six, seven on the sixth string. And then you're going to go to the fifth fret of the fourth string. So you're going to string skip over the fifth string. Now, for me, it makes more sense to, to do this with alternate picking. But again, if you'd rather do it down picking and it's comfortable for you, by all means, go ahead and, and do that as well. So let me show you what we got here. So we're going three, five, then we go into... So then we come out of that with that same zero zero seven. Ba then he goes into a hammer on pull off thing from zero to two on the third string. It's called a trill. And you don't have a lot of time, so you just do them as many as you can in a short amount of time. And then he does the same thing on the fourth string. And then you do that same riff again, zero zero seven. Five, six, seven, five. Okay. So let me slow that whole thing down. So I'm going. Then. Then he 
does that lick, and what he's doing there is dropping down a blues scale. He's going 7-5 on the fifth string, then 7-6-5 on the sixth string. Then he drops all the way down to the second fret of the sixth string. Because he's leading to a G. Okay? So you're coming off... Now here, we're going to play G to E, or G to A. And you can play it as 3 to 5 on the 6th string as power chords. You can play it from uh, G to A like this. G to A is an open power chord. You can play it as an open G to A. Again, it doesn't really make any difference. Just whatever's more comfortable for you and whatever makes more sense in your head. So I'm going to be going from this open G idea to an A power chord. Okay, so then what I'm doing is I'm going to pluck this fourth string palm muted four times, and then I'm going to do a unison bend by going to the 12th fret of the first string with my index finger, and the 15th fret of the second string with my ring finger, and I'm going to use my middle finger on the second string as well to help bend that second string up. So I'm going to bend the second string while keeping the first string intact, and they're going to become the same pitch. probably heard those bends before. So you're going... And if you can add a little vibrato at the end, it sounds really nice too. So once you get it up to where you want, then you just shake the, the ring finger string, the second string, a little bit and give it a little vibrato, okay? So I'm coming off G to A to G again. Go to, you're going to go to a third fret power chord on the fifth string, and then you're going to do what, what many people call a slash chord, and that's when you take your index finger and you move down one fret like this. You're going to move to the second fret. Now when you do that, if you're using your pinky, you need to take your pinky off and either not play that string at all, the third string, or you can take your middle finger and you can go to the third string, uh, fourth fret with your middle finger like this. Because these guys are octaves, if you didn't know that your first finger and your pinky are octaves. So if you move this guy down, you gotta move this one down too. Well, you can't do that with him sitting here. So you're gonna have to switch fingers. Or simply don't play that string. If you're a two finger power chord player, you don't even need to worry about it. So I'm going from G to A to See that? So that's what you wanna do. And then we're gonna go to A. And then we're going to go to a B power chord by going to the 2nd fret. So it sounds like this. It goes G, A, C, B, A, G, B. And again, you can decide how you want to strum it in there, if you just want to strum once per chord or whatever. So let me put that together now so you can hear it in context. So I'm going to be doing the verse, okay? So here we go. And then we're back in. Okay, and so on. Now, then it moves into the part right before the solo, and that part sounds like this. Okay, so what you're doing here, and I'll give you a couple of options, you're going to go to the seventh fret of the fifth string and make a power chord there and you're going to pluck that 6th string four times palm muted, and you're going to strum that E power chord, then you're going to slide from, well you're not really sliding, I guess you are, but you're going to strum them both. You're going from 7 to 5. And you want to pick them both, so you have... 
And then you're going to go from A to D. And it's kind of a, like a jump. It goes A to D. It, it's on the offbeat. The D comes in. So you could go to A down here and D there, or A, D here. You could go A, D here. Okay. Again, just whatever's comfortable for you. So the way I was doing it was I was going from A down here to D up here. So let me try it from this A here. So if I go... Or... I could do it that way too. So just whatever's comfortable for you. Okay, so we've got our intro. Again, mapping this out. We've got our intro, which was G, uh, D, E minor. C, D, E minor, and then we go into the da 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 which is the C to D power chord thing. Then we go into our chorus riff. And remember that ends with that blues run down to the second fret there, excuse me. And then you're going to go into the verse, which is G, A, and then that, that unison bend. Okay? And then you come out of that doing G, A, C, B, A, G, B. And I'm not trying to go fast. The big thing I want you to understand is that with video, you can always watch it over and over and over. And one of the most important things that people don't do is get out a piece of paper and a pencil and just map these things out. Write down, okay, this is how my intro goes. You don't have to tab it all out if you don't want to. You can just write yourself some, some memory tips so you can visualize each pattern as they come along. I try and teach my students that a lot. That way, when they go to play songs, they're very efficient on learning how to play tunes. 